Okay, good afternoon and thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, apologies for starting slightly late, having a few technical issues, but we think we are there now. So my name is David and I look after the Indian subcontinent at the university. Uh, my name is Sally and I look after Southeast Asia. Okay, so what we're going to do is begin today's session by taking you through a presentation about the university. And then at the end of this session, we'll open it up to any questions that you'd like to ask. Um, we can see that some people online are already submitting questions, so that's fantastic. Um, so just please feel to add any questions you'd like um, throughout our session. Just loading the uh, presentation for you now. Okay, so here is our introduction to studying at the University of South Wales. Okay, so first and foremost, um, why study in the UK? There are hundreds of options for you uh, to study in the UK and equally all around the world. Um, studying in the UK has always been a desirable destination. We've got a long history of providing higher education and that's actually been for over 900 years. So all over the world, the UK reputation for quality is second to none. Um, also, because of this, we are very lucky that we attract students from all over the world to come and study within our institutions. So actually studying with us is one of the most multicultural environments that you'll actually find anywhere in the UK. The lovely thing about that is that you don't just learn from your tutors uh, and the, the award leaders on your programs. You actually learn from each other as well. So comparing and contrasting different ideas, looking at different cultural experiences and learning about um, different countries and their culture. So that's one of the really nice things about studying in a UK institution. And obviously studying abroad is about meeting people, it's about making contacts, networking, and having these relationships that you can develop through the rest of your professional careers. Okay, so where are we? Um, so Wales is a country within the United Kingdom based on the west, in the west of the uh, UK and Cardiff is the capital of Wales and Cardiff is in the south and at the university we have three campuses within South Wales in Cardiff, Newport and also Pontypridd. Um, Cardiff is an excellent location with regards to uh, transport, transport links so you have um, an international airport in Cardiff. You also have Bristol International Airport around 40 minutes away by, by car or bus. And Cardiff is only two and a half hours by train to London. Um, so excellent if you would like to be a tourist and taking the sights of London. Um, the benefit of being in this area also means that you have excellent beaches along the coastlines. So the further west you go, the more beautiful those beaches become. Um, and actually, we've been awarded, um, I think, one of the best, uh, one of the top ten best beaches in the world in the Gower Peninsula. So if you're here, I would strongly recommend that you go and experience that beach. Um, the UK, the uh, area of South Wales also. Um, offers um, some students very low cost of living but very high standard of living. Um, a typical student would expect to pay around £600 per month which obviously um, is a lot less than you would expect to pay if you were studying in London and that would include your accommodation, food, laundry, books and your moderate socialising. So the, the area has a lot to offer whether it's uh, beach life, city life, mountains, um, you've got London close by, um, lots of airports, so should you want to uh, take advantage and go and visit uh, Scotland or Ireland or even go across to Europe as well, then there's lots of possibilities for you. Okay, so why should you consider the South University of South Wales as a destination to study? Okay, so in 2013, the University of South Wales um, began um, by its new name. We are formerly the University of Glamorgan, 
and the University of Newport. And we had a merger in 2013 to become the brand new institution of the University of South Wales. So since the merger, we now have over 33,000 students studying with us at the university and around about 4,500 international students and, and from the EU as well. Um, we think we're an excellent choice for students to come and study. We're very social, very friendly and very supportive. Um, recently, um, we were voted as one of the top 10 universities in the UK um, with the What Uni uh, rankings. And that looked at our, um, our full offering from the university. So that was taking into account the courses that you can study, um, the likelihood of getting good employability options once you've graduated, the social activities, the sports, um, and the support services offered to you, as well as the location. Um, and this is a survey conducted all over the UK um, and it takes into account the students' feedback about what they like about the university. And as I say, we actually came out as uh, one of the top 10 in the UK, which is obviously very good to see. The university itself also offers some partial scholarships to international students. So we, are, we do have some additional funding to help fund your studies in the UK. Um, the scholarships range between one and a half thousand pounds up to our international development scholarship, which is two and a half thousand pounds. Um, one of the main focuses for us, and I think at most universities, is employability. Ultimately, you're coming to university to obtain a qualification that's going to enable you to get the best job possible for you. So we work very closely with industry to make sure that our courses have the desirable content that employers are looking for. So that also means that we constantly refresh the syllabus. So every year we'll have consultations with the industry to make sure that the content is up to date and that we're uh, introducing the new themes in any particular discipline. So you're always going to be studying the most up to date um, theories and strategies. Um, because of our close relationship with these companies and with the industry itself, we do have a very um, high employability rate. So we were again recognized as one of the top universities in the UK in terms of employability with over 94% of our students getting a job within six months of graduation or continuing on to their higher education. So maybe from undergraduate to postgraduate or from postgraduate into research. And um, again, the courses are recognized by these professional bodies. So for example, um, ACCA, the CIM, CIPD, the Center of Engineering, or CILT have all accredited our programs. Um, we also work with a huge range of global brands, so we want students to get good exposure with these leading companies. Um, but for us, it's important to be realistic. Not every graduate is gonna go and work for a multinational corporation straight away after they've graduated. So for us, we try to link you with different types of business. So it may be that you're working with small sized companies, medium sized companies, or these multinational brands. The types of challenges facing different companies can be very, very diverse. So it's important to get good exposure um, and a range of different um, activities within these placement opportunities. Okay, so our location. Um, so I explained where we are situated within the United Kingdom, but these are some images that you would expect to see should you come to, to Wales. Now we have lots of beautiful mountains, um, lakes, Castles, we have more castles per square mile than anywhere else in the world. We have a really beautiful castle right in the heart of Cardiff city centre. Um, if you're into your outdoor activities, then, then Wales is the place for you to be. Should it be hiking, mountain biking, surfing, then Wales offers lots of different opportunities. We also have the Wales Millennium Theatre. So all the big shows that happen in London, they come to Cardiff and you can watch all the shows such as Billy Elliot um, is going to be there uh, next month. Um, so lots of different um, shows for you to enjoy there as well. Shopping malls. Um, so there are several shopping malls um, within the heart of Cardiff city centre. Newport as well, um, huge um, development within Newport city centre. So lots of new restaurants and shops for you to enjoy also. Moving on to the Treforest campus. So Treforest is where we teach uh, business, engineering, law, psychology, English, computing, um, and some accounting programs as well. And Treforest itself is an area where you can have everything that you need at your fingertips. So for example, on campus, 
you would have um, restaurants, there's a Starbucks, you've got a 24-hour library, a gym and a sports center. There's also 24-hour security, so it's very safe for our students to be here. Um, you have prayer rooms, should you want them, halal food for our Muslim students. And then the train station is only two minutes walk away. Now, if you go on that train for just one stop, for just two minutes, you come to the, the town of Pontypridd. And this is where you might open a bank account, um, buy a mobile phone or get some shopping. However, if you go on that train for 20 minutes, you come into the heart of Cardiff city centre. And this is where you might go to the shopping malls, meet friends for dinner, um, go to the cinema or the theatre. So it gives you a lot of opportunities to experience different towns and cities. Then we have Cardiff campus and this is called the Atrium and this is in the heart of Cardiff city centre. It's three minutes walk into the, um, into the shopping district and within this campus we will be um, teaching fashion, interior design, media, photography, uh, drama and music, so graphic communications, all of the creative industries are caught, taught here as well as some of our professional courses, um, so finance we teach here as well, um, we have a trading floor so students are able to get hands-on experience um, within the financial sector and we also have um, a financial um, clinic as well so public members of the public can come in and they can work with our students and um, get some hands-on experience. We then have Newport City campus. Um, so this is about 20 minutes away um, by train from Cardiff. Um, and Newport itself is another city um, offering lots of different shops and restaurants to experience. And it's worth mentioning that all of our campuses have accommodation facilities um, either within the campus or with only two to three minutes walk away. So everything is very easy for you to reach. And again, there's um, a train station within walking distance of Newport City campus. So it's very easy for you to get around. And in Newport, we teach um, education, social work, TESOL, um, as well as some ACCA accounting programs as well. Okay. So as Sally has just mentioned, uh, we have a range of campuses and each campus has its own specialist subject areas. And we actually teach over 580 subject areas at the university. So that's from foundation level, undergraduate, postgraduate, and some research opportunities. So there really is quite a wide range of choices out there. So there certainly is um, a course out there for you. If you are interested in applying um, to the university, there's several ways that you can actually go about this. You can either apply directly yourself and that would be by visiting the link on screen there. So that's myusw.southwales.ac.uk. And then you can actually launch your own application online. Or the university works with various representative agents in countries all over the world. So you can actually visit our websites and look at our country specific pages and they can give you the location and the names of some of the agents that we work with at the university. You can go to their offices and they will actually assist you in launching applications and give you some general guidance about the process of applying for the visa um, and the various stages that you'd need to go through. Um, another option for you if you are an undergraduate student is to use a service called UCAS, um, which is the Universities and Colleges Admission Service. The advantage of going through UCAS directly is actually that you would pay a nominal charge of approximately £20 and it enables you to apply to up to five universities in one go. So whilst we do accept applications directly, um, you can also go through this means as well. Um, as I said, uh, enabling you to apply to up to five universities in one go. So when you would write a personal statement, which we'll talk about in a moment, you would say something more generalized. So you would say, I want to study at your university, as opposed to saying, I want to study at the University of South Wales specifically. And then each university will receive the same application and then process that and then release an offer letter to you, to you hopefully. Um, as part of the application, we are going to be looking for several things from you. So first and foremost, importantly, we'll be looking at your academics. 
So it may be that you've done a GCSE O level, uh, you may have done your higher second uh, qualification, or depending on the different country you're from, uh, we would look at your highest qualification. Um, we would then also be looking for your English language skill. So again, if you've done the GCSE um, and A level route, we can accept a GCSE level C um, in the IGCSE, or we would look at um, your individual country's requirements uh, and match them against our English, or we can look at an IELTS examination from you. If you take an IELTS, we would generally look for a uh, level six for an undergraduate program with a minimum 5.5 band in each area. Or if you're gonna to apply to one of our postgraduate courses, we would look for an IELTS level 6.5 with 5.5 again in each of the bands, but 6.5 overall. So the first two things, academics and your English. Next, we'd look for your personal statement. Uh, we'll come on to tell you a bit more about that in a moment, but generally just an introduction to yourself, what you're looking to study, why you've chosen to study it, and what you see yourself doing with this qualification in the future. Um, we'd also then look for either um, two academic references or an academic and a professional reference if you have some work experience. We can also ex um, consider um, work experience as part of your application um, as well. And then finally, for some of the more creative um, based subject areas, so our art, um, our drama, uh, we would have our fashion design, we may actually require a portfolio. Um, so that's where you can demonstrate your skills in either um, a computerized um, document which you can send to us or you could scan um, copies of um, art or, or drawings that you've previously sketched and the faculty would then consider that as part of that application process. Again, there would probably be an interview for the uh, creative um, based programs which would be conducted by Skype. We wouldn't want uh, or expect you to come to travel to the UK to have the interview so we can facilitate that online for you. Okay, so going back to the personal statements. Um, a personal statement is what the university will look at to understand what you have studied previously, your passions, why you were choosing to study in the UK and specifically your chosen university, and whether or not you are applying for the right course that's going to give you the outcome that you desire once you graduate. Now, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. We're looking for around 400 words. So we're not looking for a, a huge thesis from you. Um, simply half a side of A4. And think of it like a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end about yourself. Now, the beginning is who are you? Where are you from? What hobbies do you have? What are you studying now? And why have you chosen the subjects that you're choosing to study? Why are you passionate about those subjects? The middle, why are you choosing the UK? Why specifically are you choosing the University of South Wales? Do you have any extra experience, perhaps some relevant work experience or maybe some volunteering experience as well? And then the end, what do you hope to do once you've graduated? Um, how, how do you hope to have developed as an individual throughout your time at the university and what do you feel that you are able to contribute to your chosen employer uh, should you be successful within your, your job application. And one thing to remember once you're writing your personal statement is if you can actually think of examples. So remember it as it says at the bottom ABC. So A is for activity, B is for benefit and C is the course. So, for example, um, some activities that you, um, you may do. So you may be um, a professional swimmer for your country and you've applied for a sports course. So your activity is swimming and how is it going to benefit um, yourself? So what, what has it allowed you to do? And then how is it going to be applicable to your chosen course? So if you can relate your experiences to how um, it's going to help you with your course, then as a university, we can assess your personal statement and make sure that the course you're choosing is going to allow you to give you, uh, so it is going to give you the outcomes that you desire. So moving on to fees. Now, the University of South Wales offers different scholarships depending on which course you apply for. Um, so it's very simple. Um, all international students who are self-funded, so that means if you or your family are uh, paying your own tuition fees, 
you will automatically qualify for our scholarship. And if you are studying an undergraduate program, we will give you £1,500 per year. So if you're studying a three-year program, you will get a total of £4,500. If you're studying a postgraduate program, we'll give you £2,000 towards your course fees and an MBA will give you 1,500. So on the screen, you can see the fees. So for example, 11,900 pounds per year for undergraduate. After scholarship, you will only pay 10,400 pounds per year. However, if you are um, from a nationality of any of the countries detailed in that red box, we will actually give you an additional scholarship an extra £1,000 for undergraduate study. So you will actually receive £2,500 per year, which means your fees are reduced to £9,400. In addition to this, we also have an early bird discount. So should you pay your fees in full within two weeks of enrolling, we will give you an extra £300 as a discount. If you don't want to do that, what you can do is pay a 50% deposit um, and then we will send you your, your CAS, which is a document you need to have in order to apply for your visa. And then you have the option to either pay the balance upon arrival and get the discount. Alternatively, you can organise to pay the remaining balance in three or seven monthly instalments and there is no interest charged if you choose this option. However, if you choose a seven month option, there is a £25 one off administration fee that you will need to pay. So there's different opportunities depending on your circumstances. But if you contact the university um, through the admissions team, we will be happy to discuss these with you should you have any questions. Okay. Um, for me, the best part about studying at this university, I'm actually a graduate of this university myself, um, and the best part for me when I studied here was the student experience. From day one, I felt I was at home. It was a very, very friendly, welcoming environment, and I found it very, very easy to make friends from all over the world. And I'm very fortunate that 11 years after I actually studied, um, I'm still friends with lots of these people on my social media and keep in touch. And whenever I get to actively travel, um, it's really nice to see the different friends I have all over the world who will post on my wall to say that I'm in the in the local area, let's meet up. So it's nice to keep in touch with all these acquaintances you make at university. Um, for international students um, themselves, we have an international welcome week. So when you first arrive at the university, the week before the main enrolment week, international students will arrive early. And that's where we actually help you to get orientated around the campus and around the local area will um, help you to get enrolled, to meet your tutors. Then we'll also get you to meet each other. Um, so we have a big welcome meal, and there's lots of different various activities that you can sign up for free of charge, and some, um, some site visits you can also do as well, um, all over the UK. So students will visit Bath and go and see the markets. They'll go um, and visit Cardiff itself and see some of the shopping areas. They can also help you out with things like how to set up a bank account and give you general practical advice about living and studying with us. Um, so this service is going to happen throughout the whole year, but this International Welcome Week is a specific week targeted to help you integrate and get um, used to living in the area. Um, as Sally mentioned earlier, we've got lots of airports um, all over the UK. Um, so some students will fly to Cardiff, some will come to Bristol. Um, the majority probably would fly to London, being one of the major areas. So what we actually do, though, is arrange an arrival service for you. So once you've confirmed your offer and once you've got your visa and you've booked your flights, you can drop us an email to the university and say, I'll be arriving on this flight at this time on this day. And we'll actually arrange for someone to meet you at the airport um, and put you onto public transport to get you safely up to South Wales. As Sally said earlier, it's approximately two and a half hours from London, it's approximately 40 minutes from Bristol and maybe 25 minutes from Cardiff Airport. So depending on where you arrive, um, obviously we can give you guidance on how to get quickly and safely to the university. Um, one of my favourite things about the International Welcome Week is seeing our global assistants. And our global assistants are actually current students um, and they generally are students from the last intake that will help out 
um, with the welcome week. So students will arrive at the university and generally everyone's a little bit nervous when they first arrive. It's your first time away from home for some people and everything's new. Um, it's really refreshing to see the students that started, let's say in the September intake, will actually help our February intake students when they arrive. And you can see how much they've developed and grown in the space of a couple of months. So it really does show that students settle in quickly, they make lots of friends, develop their confidence and their skills, and they can actually help the new students coming through. And it's really nice as kind of a passing of the torch to help these students come on and, and give them the, the strength and the guidance that you can provide for them. Um, we also have a huge range of extracurricular activities for you at the university. And for me, again, that's really important. We, do, we obviously want you to get a very good degree and get the qualification that's going to help you get a good job. But employers don't want to just see an academic CV. They don't just want to see that you've got 95% in your examinations because it doesn't actually show you anything about yourself and, and kind of your other skills and the other things you could bring to the role. So getting involved with activities, um, it could be as part of a team or individually. Um, you can get involved with a huge range of hobbies and interests and try new things for the first time. But having a balanced CV and showing that you've had time to manage your activities around your academic um, work shows that you've got time management skills, that you've obviously developed as a person, you've been integrating, you've actually been working as part of um, a team as well as just doing your individual activities. So it's desirable of things to see on the CV that will really help you get the job. Um, and as I said, there's organized trips all throughout the year. So lots of different activities that you can uh, enjoy um, all throughout. Sports and recreation, again, is important for your health, um, for your, for your well being, and generally to relax. We have an amazing range of sports facilities at the university. On the Treforest campus itself, we have our own sports center. So that's where you can play lots of indoor sports. Um, so we've got indoor football, indoor hockey, um, we've got badminton, volleyball, basketball. We've then also got um, dance classes, self-defense. We've got activities such as rock climbing. We have our own rock climbing wall in the gym itself. Um, we also have obviously its own gymnasium, its own strength and conditioning room. We also have our own sauna. So there's lots of things to try. Um, and even if you just want to kind of relax in the sauna, you're welcome to use that. There's a membership um, charge to the gym um, and there's discounted prices for students all throughout the year as well. Um, but it's a really good way to get involved and meet new people and to obviously represent the university. So students that would like to represent the university can actually play for our sports teams and they'll actually travel all over the UK playing against different universities um, in various different sports. So for example, when I was in uh, the university, I actually was captain of the hockey team. So I got to travel all over the UK uh, and play in the British University Championships. So lots of things to see and do. We've got football, rugby, cricket, netball, volleyball, basketball, to name but a few sports. There really is a huge range of options out there for you. Okay, so moving on to accommodation. Um, this is obviously one of the most important things that I think our international students like to settle and know where they're actually going to live and their families also want to know as well. So we have a very supportive accommodation team that will help you find the right accommodation for you. There are several options and as mentioned earlier, we have accommodation um, for each of our campuses. So there's no need for you to travel between campuses. If you're studying in the Cardiff campus, there's no need for you to go to Treforest. Should you, um, you know, if you want to, you can, but with regards to accommodation or your lectures, they'll all be on that same campus in Cardiff. So we have um, on-campus accommodation and rooms start from around £80 per week up to £128 per week depending on your campus and also depending on the size of the room that you choose and you can see in this picture the one on the uh, bottom is actually this is one of our premium rooms um, so it's one of our biggest rooms uh, it's got a double bed all the storage facilities that you need um, and also all of the rooms have their own ensuite bathrooms as well and what that means is you get your own room your own bathroom so you don't have to share 
but also within your block there'll be five or six students in total and you can share a kitchen and a living area so should you want to do your own cooking then that's not a problem and actually it's a really sociable place for you to be we get lots of international students cooking their local home dishes for each other so you can experience different tastes from around the world and what you'll find is we also have bedding packs so you don't need to worry about bringing your uh, duvet covers with you and pillows. We have very reasonable prices, um, starting I think from around £25 for a single bed. So we give you your sheets and your duvet, your pillows and pillowcases. Um, but also there's an Ikea in Cardiff as well. So we, we do trips to Ikea where you can actually buy what you need. And then what's important to mention is actually the on-campus accommodation options. Um, should you want single sex uh, blocks, we can do that. If you want quiet blocks, we can also do that for you as well. So when you make your application, you just put your preferences. Now all the, um, the costs, so for example, for on-campus accommodation between 80 and 128 pounds a week, this includes all of your utilities. So things like Wi-Fi, water and electric, you haven't got to worry about paying that in addition. Should you want um, off-campus accommodation or maybe you, your budget's not as high, then we have uh, lots of options for you within the local area. And off-campus accommodation, what that means is you'll have a shared house with um, maybe four, five other people, three, four or five other people, depending on the size of the house. And you get your own bedroom, but it would be a shared bathroom, kitchen and a living room but it is quite a lot cheaper. So you would expect to pay between about 50 and 60 pounds a week. But what you should also do is obviously take into account some budget for your utility bills. Maybe 10 pounds extra a week would see you um, with enough to you know, pay for your electricity and your water if they're not included within your, your room rates. So we have a very good accommodation office that will actually um, help you find the right accommodation for you. And all of our on-campus accommodation um, is a very safe environment for our students. Um, we have 24-hour 24 24-hour um, security, but also we have resident tutors living on campus as well. So there's always somebody available 365 days a year. Okay, um, so as I touched on earlier, um, we have the International Welcome Programme. This year it's going to run from the 10th to the 19th of September. Um, generally students will arrive um, between the 9th, 10th and 11th of September. If, however, you are going to arrive later, we can make arrangements for you as well. So please keep in touch and let us know that. Um, so it focuses on your social and practical acclimatisation. Um, and it's about getting used to living in the local area. We wouldn't want you to arrive one day and start your course the next day because obviously it's a long journey for most of you and we want you to relax, settle in, make some friends and feel at home and you have about a week and a half to kind of acclimatise before you go into it and um, that's a, a nice way to settle in. Um, so just keep in touch with us as you would, as we said earlier, if you are going to arrive um, at one of the, the airports, please let us know, I'll be happy to meet you at um, one of the airports, so just let us know your arrival details. Um, so the activities that you come across in the Welcome Week um, are the student registration service. So again, getting um, your uh, final um, of vignette for your, your visa. Um, so once you arrive on the Tier 4 visa, you'd have to get that from the local post office or collect from the university itself. Um, we've got a couple of examples of some of the activities you can get up to. So last year, our students uh, had a drumming session, again, kind of helping to meet each other and learn about different cultures. Um, another example in the bottom left was a boat tour that we took our students on to Cardiff to see that um, and have a look around the marina there. And then another example was we took our students to see the Cardiff Castle and a walking tour of Cardiff again, seeing some of the local attractions and lots of the activities that you could get up to whilst you're studying with us. So I think we're going to leave it with the presentation for now. Hopefully that's giving you a nice flavour of the university. And now we're going to flip over to some of the questions that you've been kindly submitting 
throughout the session. Hopefully we'll give you some uh, answers uh, for those. So thank you very much for your patience there. Okay, so um, we're not going to take questions in a particular order. We'll just see them as they come up um, on the side of the screen. Um, so uh, the top question we have here, um, for in-campus in accommodation at the Trafores campus, is it possible to have Muslim roommates? Um, yes, without a doubt. Again, that's something that you can request when you are um, applying for the accommodation itself. So, for example, if you are Muslim, um, we obviously understand that you would like halal um, food preparation areas. Um, we wouldn't expect you to um, have to, to kind of clean every time you want to do something like that. So you would certainly just let us know and we can try and put you with students with similar interests, similar backgrounds or similar cultures and therefore make it um, sorted out for you. Again, if you'd like to, if you're a young female student and you'd like to live purely with young females, we can arrange that for you. Um, again, if you are um, very much going to concentrate on your studies and you want to be in a quiet location, again, you can put a request in that we can find similar students that have requested quite um, a peaceful accommodation and we can arrange that for you. So just let us know what your particular interests are and we can certainly try and accommodate that for you. Okay, okay so the next question is um, actually, please explain the steps in order um, after receiving the conditional offer. So once you've received your conditional offer, um, what we would need you to do is demonstrate to us or send us proof that you've actually met the conditions of your offer. So for example, uh, you may uh, have an offer that says, you are welcome to study with us should you have IELTS 6 overall with 5.5 in each band. Now you would send us your IELTS certificate or we would arrange for you to do one of our English tests. And once you've demonstrated you meet that minimum English requirement, we would then send you an unconditional offer, which means you have a guaranteed place with us. And within that offer, it would show you uh, what you need to do in order to pay your deposit. So what we require is for you to pay a 50% minimum um, deposit payment for your fees for the year. And once those funds are in our account, we'll then send you your CAS. And this is what you would use to apply for your visa. And once you've made your visa application, we will actually um, then we can allocate you a room um, on campus if you want to. Um, and then once you've got your visa, if you can let us know once you've got that, that would be great. We can update our system our end. And then all that's needed to do is to welcome you to the campus. So it's as easy as that. Okay, so next question. Um, I want to know when I can start applying for admission and if it will cost me any fees or not. Could you detail the application procedure more? Okay, thank you very much for the question. Um, so, Good news, there's absolutely no um, application fee at all. It's free to apply to the university itself. And the only time that you would make a payment is once you hold your unconditional offer and you've decided you want to join us and that you are um, going to make that 50% deposit. So that's the only time you'd actually pay any money for that. In terms of the application, as I said earlier, you can go online um, and actually launch your own application, upload your own documents, and then we would process and give you the offer letter. Or you can contact one of our registered agents in country and they will do um, assist you in launching the application online. Um, if you have the option to go through an agent, it's free of charge to use their services. Um, so I would advise doing it because they are experts in the process and it will just take any of the confusion out of the way for you. And as we said earlier, once you get your offer letter, it details what you need to do next and the next steps in the procedure. So we'll take it one step at a time. Any particular questions, just come back to us once you've uh, launched the application and we can assist you further uh, for that as well. Okay. Okay, next question. Is there a deadline for international arrival service? Um, the, what happens is um, term starts on the 20... Sorry, 19th of September, um, that's when enrollment week is. And international students have the opportunity to come one week earlier for international welcome week. So that starts on the 12th of September. 
Um, and then lectures will start actually on the 26th of September. Um, with regards to arrival services, um, I believe that there's a two week um, period in which we will uh, be able to uh, honor those arrival services that we have. So there's normally a two week um, extension from the 19th of September um, in which you're able to arrive. But the best thing to do if you think you're going to be arriving late, let us know and then we can give you the right advice depending on your circumstances and then we can take it from there for you. Okay. Okay, um, next question uh, is generally how many um, classes a week for MSc courses? Um, each course will be slightly different in its structure and its delivery. Um, on a postgraduate course, we would say that the average student would have between 12 and 14 hours of contact time per week. By contact time, we mean lectures, tutorials, seminars, and meetings with your, um, your award leader and members of staff. Around, around that, um, you would then be expected to do your own independent research um, and preparing for the next lectures. So generally when you join a programme, you'll get given a course handbook and it'll have some additional reading that you can actually um, prepare uh, yourself in advance for the classes. So we don't want you coming in um, with, with absolutely no knowledge and you would generally prepare for that. So you'd be doing about 26, 28 hours worth of work per week. And then outside of that time, you would be able to do 20 hours of part-time work, for example, or you can engage with the sports programs or just generally leisure activities and, and whatever your hobbies and interests are throughout that time as well. Uh, next question is about um, sports in Newport campus. We don't have a specific um, sports center on the Newport campus itself. However, there are lots of local uh, public services that you can engage with there. So there are lots of gyms that you can join, there's lots of swimming pools and lots of different uh, leisure activities, sports clubs like hockey teams, football teams, cricket teams. So those are mostly um, external to the university but in the in the local location. However, you are also, um, a, a, as part of the university, you can be on any campus at any time. So you are a member of the university and not limited to staying on the Newport campus or staying on Forest campus. So you would be part of the university and you can still represent the university and the sports teams. They would probably train um, at the Glamorgan Sports Park, which is near the Forest campus, but you certainly still would be eligible to play in those sports teams and get involved with the activities um, as well. Okay, um, the next one's not actually a question, it's just a comment, but thank you very okay. much uh, to hear that. I'm really pleased. So, this is uh, Thiong Phan Kak from, I'm guessing, Malaysia? Vietnam. Vietnam, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, just so thank you for our, our presentation, great enthusiasm. You're absolutely welcome. Hopefully, it has been useful to all of you today. Um, with yes. the next question, I think we probably wouldn't be able to answer that off the top of our head. So, Someone's asking about, um, Saeed is asking um, about the bank balance for a tier four student um, and if there's also three dependents. That is quite a technical question. Um, I don't think either of us would be able to answer you straight away. What I would suggest is if you drop us an email, um, we can advise you to go and speak to one of your local representatives and they can talk to you in a bit more detail about your circumstances and exactly what you would need to demonstrate in order to, um, to meet the conditions of um, gaining a tier four visa. So um, it's a little bit of a kind of tricky question to answer just by uh, talking in general. Okay, so the next question, uh, someone's asking about the Kira interview. Um, so Amir uh, received an unconditional offer. Um, why do they have to take a Kira interview? So a Kira interview is kind of like a mock interview for you to practice. Uh, should you be called for interview with the UK VI. Now, what we don't want you to do is be unprepared, go for your UK VI interview, and unfortunately not pass it and have your visa um, rejected. So what we're doing as a university is taking every step possible to prepare you fully um, for when you are called for interview. And this is what we call a Kira interview. So you can do it at home, um, in, in you know your own company and 
it's all online so we send you a link and you're basically just reading the questions online and then you're recording your answers as we are here today and then your results are actually sent back to the university and we assess your answers to establish whether or not we feel that you're ready to take your proper interview when it comes to your visa application um, so we're, we're not doing it to be difficult, we're actually doing it to help you and make sure that you're not going to get rejected and obviously it's cost a lot of money for you to apply for a visa. So we don't want you to have to waste that money. Um, so once you've got your unconditional offer, um, we will ask you to take a Kira interview if it's for a certain course and, and from certain countries and we'll ask you to do that and um, hopefully then you'll be fully prepared for your UKVI interview. Um, so the next question is, um, is it possible to receive an answer before submitting the final IGCSE results in August? So if you haven't yet made an application um, and you're expecting your results in August, what you can do is you can send us your um, details about what you've been studying, your predicted grades, and what you would like to study at the University of South Wales. And then we can give you an indication as to whether or not we think it's worthwhile you submitting your application. Um, it, there is still time for um, people to apply for certain courses. Um, so if you haven't yet applied, don't worry, there is still time. But yes, we can give you a, um, an indication as to whether we think you would be accepted um, if you haven't got your firm results yet. And um, we can give you that, that kind of guidance. Okay, the final two questions I think we're going to take are um, what is required for my CAS statement to be issued? Um, so I'll do that quite quickly. So once you have applied to the university and you've got your unconditional offer and you've paid your 50% deposit, that's when we can release the CAS statement. As part of that though, you are going to have to show um, the evidence of your maintenance in your account. So you'd have to have the remaining balance of the course fee, uh, so the remaining 50%. Plus, you'd have to show that you have the balance to support your living in uh, the UK for the 12 months of the programme. Outside of London, you'd have to have £1,020 per month of your living expenses um, for the 12 months, so approximately just over £12,500. Um, although they say it's £1,020 per month, that is a UK average, and fortunately, South Wales is considerably, che considerably cheaper as an area to live. So in real terms, as Sally said earlier, the average student would spend between six and a maximum 700 pounds per month for their accommodation, their food, their travel, and their incidentals. Obviously, if you're partying lots, um, if you buy a car, if you have a fetish for buying too many clothes, that's when the expenses are gonna creep up. So it's about being sensible, um, living on a, um, a sensible budget, working together. So when you're living in halls of accommodation, there's no point in all six of you individually shopping and buying the same things. And at the end of the week, you end up with way too much food and unfortunately some of it's gone stale. So you wanna to work together as a team, either in halls of residence or in a house. So making a shopping list together, taking it in turns to cook and getting the best value for money you can um, from your expenditure. So we give you lots of study tips and um, financial tips when you're at the university as well. And we do want you to have a cost effective um, time studying with us. So um, it's, uh, it's certainly kind of a pretty reasonable area to live in terms of that. Okay. okay. I'm going to answer two questions at once about accommodation. So someone's asking about off-campus accommodation and someone's asking about the 40-week contract. So where do they store their bags during the summer? Now, if you want off-campus accommodation, um, the people you need to contact is our accommodation team, and they can be contacted at accom at southwales.ac.uk, and, and they can help you with your preferences. Now, if you've got a 40-week contract with us, which is a, a usual standard contract um, throughout the term time, you've got the opportunity to either go home um, and spend the summer with your family. Alternatively, you can stay on campus and you would just need to talk to the accommodation team about extending your contract. Um, from my understanding, we don't have anywhere where you would actually store your bags. We haven't got 
um, room for you to actually do that. But what you might want to do is sort out accommodation um, ready for when you do come back in September and see if you can store your bags there, see if a friend has got some room um, or take it back with you like you suggest in, in your question. But we, we can actually extend your contract for you should you need to. Some letting agencies in the local area as well, um, because the vast majority of houses will um, be vacated over the summer period, there will be a lot of accommodation that's left free. Um, so potentially what you can do is arrange with the letting agency and you'd maybe pay a fraction of the rent per month to secure your belongings in there. So if you did have some large items, if you brought your drum kit with you, if you, if you bought a big TV when you're in the UK, you obviously wouldn't want to take that back with you when you go back home to bring it back. So you can actually arrange your accommodation in advance and potentially negotiate a discounted rate to just store it in that property um, itself. Or the other option that you would have, again, if there's a group of you, if you've made a couple of friends, all of you are in the same position with large bulky items that you don't want to actually take back with you, there's actually places that you could actually go and actually hire um, almost like um, storage a, stor units. a storage unit. Um, it would cost you a couple of hundred pounds between you, maybe a hundred pounds each for maybe eight weeks. And you could actually just hire this room, you lock it up, you have your own padlock on it so no one can break into it and you could use that as a facility as well. So there would be like you store higher places that you can you can also do as well. Um, so we can so I'll look at that for you. Okay. I think um, there's a couple final questions. I think we've pretty much covered that. The other two um, questions we have remaining are about students that are currently holding offers. Um, so currently I've got an unconditional offer. Um, there are optional modules within each course. Um, so there will be some um, core content that you have to study. Usually the first year you would generally study the main syllabus. It's the second and third year where you will have the main options to choose elective modules. Each course is slightly different, so that's not necessarily the case. Um, but in the finance and investment, I believe there would be some um, optional um, modules that you could tailor it to your own interests. And then the final question we received was about a student's received their conditional offer um, and is just waiting for an update. So what I would suggest, Saida, is if you'd like to drop one of us an email, um, we can have a look at your application and we can give you an update on that for you. I imagine the only reason for the delay is purely that uh, there's been lots of interviews taking place and the feedback is still coming through. But uh, we'll chase that up for you and we'll hopefully have an unconditional offer with you very, very shortly. Okay, so thank you very much for you all joining us today. I hope it's been useful. Um, this is just one of the sessions that we've conducted, but if you look at our YouTube page, there's actually probably about 20 or 30 question and answer sessions that have happened over the last couple of years. Um, so there's lots more information out there. Obviously, our website itself is full of information about the course and the university, um, but feel free to drop either of us an email um, and we'll be happy to assist you um, going forward. Best of luck with the, uh, the rest of your summer and we look forward to welcoming you uh, hopefully in September or February. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.